In life, we often find ourselves striving for success, seeking to be favored, and yearning for blessings to manifest in our lives. But something encompasses all this, which is the favor of God. Rather than seeking success and favor of men, you cannot go wrong with God's favor. The invitation to embrace the favor of God is not limited to a selected few, but is open to all who earnestly seek His presence. However, as a Christian, you have a unique advantage. You have been given the ability to invite the favor of God into your life, knowing that His abundant love and grace can transform even the most challenging circumstances. So, what is the profound truth that lies in seeking, receiving, and living under the divine favor of your Heavenly Father? Scripture says you should ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. So, how do you invite or activate God's divine favor in your life? First, you need to understand what divine favor is by seeking God wholeheartedly. God's favor is not a mere wish or a stroke of luck. It is the manifestation of His grace and love toward His children. This is God's unmerited love, breakthrough, and kindness poured out upon you. It is an undeserved blessing, yet freely given to those who believe and trust in Him. The Bible tells us that God's favor is not based on your achievements, efforts, or merit, but on His unchanging nature that transcends human comprehension. The children of Israel experienced God's divine favor not because of anything special. After leaving Egypt, despite their continuous murmurs and complaints, making God feel incapable, God's mighty hand rested on them. For 40 days and nights, He shielded and provided for them until they reached the promised land. It is a supernatural gift bestowed on you purely because of God's infinite love and mercy. God's favor is a shield that protects guides, and opens doors that no man can shut. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Psalm 84, 11. Beloved, the favor of God opens you up to good things. It singles you out among thousands. It makes you the center of attraction. You don't need to be qualified. It equips you, compensates for your shortcomings, and makes you qualified. God's favor is the secret to enjoying life and living in abundance. You can't afford to do life without it. If not, you'll keep struggling. This divine favor mostly locates those who have a relationship with God. Do you want to partake in this? Listen, to seek God wholeheartedly, you need to cultivate a deep and intimate relationship with Him through prayer, worship, and constant study of His Word. The book of Matthew 6.33 admonishes that if you seek God's righteousness, you'll get other things. Interesting! This is an open check. It means the favor comes automatically when you cultivate that relationship with God. As you align yourself with the will of the Almighty, you position yourself to receive His favor. Also, you need to acknowledge your dependence on Him. When you see the dawn of a new day, let your confession be, O oh Lord, I am nothing without You. You're the reason I'm alive, and You're the air I breathe. Humbly come before His presence, surrendering your plans and desires and seeking His guidance. Through fervent prayer, cultivating a deep relationship with God, and meditating on His Word, you position yourself to receive His favor. Secondly, you need to activate God's favor by living a life of faith and embracing an attitude of gratitude. Inviting God's favor requires an unwavering belief in His promises. Even when circumstances seem impossible, you'll need to hold on to the truth that God is faithful and His favor can turn any situation around. To live a life fueled by faith is to proclaim His promises, 
confess them over your life and walk in confident expectation of his favor to manifest. Make declarations like, I am blessed and highly favored. My God has made me the head and never the tail. I am prosperous through Christ. Scripture reveals that the power of life and death is in the tongue. So if you choose to confess negativity, don't complain when negative circumstances become your reality. Gratitude opens the door for God's favor to flow abundantly in one's life. When you cultivate a heart of thanksgiving and praise, you create an atmosphere that attracts blessings. Gratefulness acknowledges God's goodness, mercy, and provision in your life, inviting Him to pour out even more favor upon you. Psalm 102-4 NIV says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. Have you ever wondered why Jesus always received prompt responses from God while He was on earth? Because He never failed to show gratitude to God. Remember, at the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus' confession was, I thank you, Father, because you always hear me. Do you thank God for the gift of life and his faithfulness in times past before going ahead to lay your requests? Or all you do is ask and ask? If the latter has been your lifestyle, you need to cultivate a lifestyle of gratitude. Beloved, the more you worship God, the more he showers his favor on you. Don't wait till everything gets better before worshiping. Worship him even when you do not feel like it. Worship him for his goodness, not just for what he has done. God is ever goodness. His goodness endures forever. Your circumstances do not reduce his goodness. So better burst out in worship even when it doesn't look like it. Thirdly, as an ambassador of God, you are called to make a difference in the world around you. How do you do this? Share His love, show kindness, extend forgiveness, and serve others selflessly. That doesn't just attract God's favor into your life. It makes you a vessel through which His favor flows to the lives of those you encounter. As you express His favor in your actions, you create a ripple effect of transformation and blessing. God's favor is not meant to be hoarded, but shared with those around you. When you extend this favor to others through acts of kindness, generosity, and love, you become an instrument of His grace, transforming lives and spreading His kingdom. That is why Luke 6.38, Give, and it will be given to you, a good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Also, always walk in obedience and trust God's perfect timing. Inviting God's favor requires you to obey His commandments completely. Obedience is not a means to earn God's favor, but rather a response to His love and grace. When you obey His instructions, you position yourself to receive His blessings. Deuteronomy 28, 1-4 NIV says, If you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. Obedience unlocks the floodgates of God's favor, pouring out blessings upon every area of your life. Our father of faith, Abraham, found favor in the sight of God because of his unwavering willingness and readiness to obey God's voice. That favor was passed down to the generations after him, 
and they excelled everywhere they went. Noah isn't an exception. Among all the people, Noah walked with God and was highly favored among men in his time. How about Joseph? Because of God's hand in Joseph's life, he was favored above his brothers, such that despite their evil schemes, God's will for Joseph's life prevailed. Beloved, you must have heard once or twice that patience is a virtue and should be a part of your life. Often, you may find yourself in seasons of waiting and wondering when God's blessings will manifest. However, you must trust in God's perfect timing. His delays are not denials. They are opportunities for you to grow in faith and character. One thing believers fail to understand is that God blesses true, but only in his timing and pace. The moment you're impatient, you're not fit to walk with him. When divine favor locates a man, protocols are broken for his sake. Where others fail to succeed, such a person excels with no special efforts. This is exactly what David experienced. He didn't need to have royalty in his lineage. Kingship located him right there in the bush as a shepherd boy. This is what God desires for all his children. However, not everyone can partake in it. God wants you to be among the very few to experience his mightiness. That is why he allowed you to come across this message. Dear believer, inviting the favor of God into your life is not a passive endeavor or a mere aspiration. It is an intentional pursuit. By seeking God, walking in obedience, trusting in his timing, and sharing his favor with others, you position yourself to experience the abundant blessings that flow from his hand. Remember that God's favor is not limited to material wealth or worldly success, but it encompasses every aspect of your life, including spiritual growth, emotional healing, and relational harmony. Recall all the Bible characters we mentioned. They are humans like you and me. They are not supreme beings. If they could attract God's divine favor, what makes you feel you can? It doesn't matter your current situation or your stand with God. He wants you to know that it is not too late. Now that you know what it takes to attract God's favor, go to him with a sincere heart of repentance and obtain forgiveness. Only then can you activate this divine favor from above. However, it is one thing to obtain favor from God and another to maintain it. What can't be kept will surely be lost. So, as you surrender to him, live by faith, embrace gratitude, in total obedience to his commandments. Let it be a lifetime habit, and you'll see yourself embarking on a journey of extraordinary transformation. Dear friend, as you continually invite God's favor into your life, remember that his blessings are beyond measure and his love is everlasting. Through divine favor, you discover your true purpose, experience supernatural provision, and be empowered to impact the world for his glory. May you continually seek his favor and walk in the radiance of his love. As you do so, trust that his plans for your life far exceed your expectations. Remain blessed. Do you feel unfulfilled despite the promotions in your career, more degrees, and expansion in business? Do you have a sense of wanting more from life? Do you feel like you can and want to do more? Or do you feel burdened about some mishaps going on around you? These might be indications that God is calling you to do something different from what you are currently doing. You must be sensitive to these signs so you don't miss out on God's plan for your life. Your ultimate goal should be to do God's will. Just like Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 puts it, Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. This is written for you too. Therefore, you need to discover it and live it out to lead a fulfilled life. The fulfillment you seek in life comes from knowing what God has called you to do and faithfully pursuing it. Make it a priority to understand what God has called you to do. Stay with God until you are certain of his calling. 
and then faithfully fulfill the assignment He has for you. Now, you might be wondering, how do I know if God's call is upon my life? What are the signs? Some people claim they heard God's voice telling them what to do. Others say they had dreams of themselves engaged in a particular activity, and they knew that was God's calling. Some may have felt the call to sing, preach, teach, evangelize, or pursue other paths since childhood. However, not everyone has such a clear calling. Waiting for a direct message from God, like Samuel's visit to David, or an angelic encounter like Gideon's, might lead to waiting indefinitely. Various signs in your life can point you toward what God wants you to do. Of course, not everyone is called to be a pastor, evangelist, missionary, or singer, but there is definitely an assignment God has for you. You have to discover it and carry it out. Many people might feel confused about what God wants them to do. They may struggle to understand the direction they should take or what to focus on. This can lead to a continuous feeling of dissatisfaction with their lives and sadness, especially when they see others easily discovering their assignments while they find it difficult. When you observe certain signs in your life, you can be certain beyond any doubt about what God wants you to do with your life. As a child of God, you know God has an assignment for you, but you might have trouble pinpointing exactly what it is. What do you do in that situation? When God calls you to do something, it often seems impossible or bigger than yourself. It may make you wonder if it can ever be accomplished. Look at Gideon's example. When the angel came to him and called him a mighty man of valor, he couldn't believe it. The one who was hiding due to fear while harvesting from his farm was now called a mighty man of valor. Even when the angel revealed what he had to do, Gideon began making excuses, seeing himself as the least in his father's house and from the least tribe in Israel, questioning how he could lead the children of Israel to victory against the Midianites. Similar reactions can be seen in Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Saul, the first king of Israel, Jeremiah, and many others. They were overwhelmed by their callings, unable to comprehend how it could be possible. In Mary's case, the angel had to assure her that with God, all things are possible. Therefore, when you feel a tug in your heart to do something seemingly impossible, that's probably God nudging you toward your calling. When you feel unqualified and unworthy of the assignment laid on your heart, that's a clear sign of God's calling over your life. Moreover, if you find your calling intimidating and significant, rejoice, because that's God's calling for you. The intimidating nature of your calling will lead you to solely depend on God throughout your journey. Since you didn't appoint yourself to this assignment, but God called you, you could not achieve anything without Him. You should not rely on your intellect, wisdom, natural abilities, or strength. Instead, your sole reliance should be on God to help and guide you through. Gideon, Jeremiah, Moses, and all others who fulfilled their callings relied solely on God. When Saul began depending on his strength and disregarded God, he lost his calling and was replaced. Therefore, as you embark on this journey, believing that you cannot do things in your strength, you must continue in that mindset even as you reach the height of fulfilling your calling. Never turn aside to depend on your abilities. Consider Moses. When he was called, he was reluctant to accept the call. He felt unqualified for the job, mainly due to his speech weaknesses. He thought he wouldn't be able to do a good job. This reluctance arose from the fact that he had to confront his weaknesses when he would have preferred to remain hidden. This, too, is another sign you should look out for in your calling. Your calling may require you to face your weaknesses while relying solely on God. Your calling should draw you closer to God, not the other way around. It demands continuous trust in God as you fulfill it. Your calling is beyond your natural abilities, and it always necessitates holding on to God's guidance. Allow Him to steer you to the required destination, since He knows the way. It would be unwise for you to try to achieve it without Him. You can't do it without Him. So, you must keep depending on Him to fulfill your purpose in life. Trust God to give you the strength you need to accomplish the tasks in your life. Prayer is indispensable if you genuinely want to do what God has called you to do. Just like Moses, who spent time with God before starting his ministry and maintained a constant relationship with Him. Another sign that will make you certain, beyond any doubt, is that what you are called to do will bring glory to Him. 
As a child of God, your calling must not be solely for selfish purposes. If your calling is only focused on making you rich, feeding your ego, or seeking personal fame, you can be sure it is not from God. You were created to give glory to God, so the ultimate result of everything you do on earth should be to bring glory to Him. When you examine the lives of those called and used mightily for God, you will find that the call was for them to abandon themselves and live completely for God's glory. Take Peter, for example. He asked Jesus what the reward would be for leaving everything to follow Him. They had abandoned their pursuit of fame, recognition, money, or the praise of men, and was wholly dedicated to living a life solely for God's glory. This is a perfect sign for you to know that your calling is genuinely from God. When it is a call that takes away any form of personal glory to living for God and His glory, then you can be certain you are on the right path. Therefore, check your passion and dreams. See if they lead you to decrease while allowing God to increase. Observe if they serve humanity in align with God's purposes on earth. God cannot call you to do something that contradicts His plan and purpose for the world. As a part of His kingdom and an ambassador, your life should fit into His overall purpose, and you will work in partnership with other believers to bring God's purposes to fruition on earth. What is the focus of your call? Every calling from God has one central focus, exalting Christ. It is not about exalting yourself, a theory, an ideology, or anything else. The sole focus is to lift the name of Christ. As the Bible says, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That is the goal of every calling, to make Christ visible through whatever you do, and for people to return all glory to Christ through your calling. Your focus regarding the calling of your life should not be solely on what you'll receive and the benefits you expect to derive from it. That would be missing the point entirely, as it would be driven by personal ambition rather than a genuine calling from God. When your calling involves nothing you can physically gain, and you willingly expend your life's resources to make it successful, then you can truly know you are fulfilling God's calling for your life. Our perfect example Jesus gave His all to fulfill God's calling for Him. It was not easy for Him to leave His heavenly glory, humble Himself to become a man, be born in a manger to humble parents, live on earth, and be despised by the very ones He was making sacrifices for, ultimately leading to a painful and shameful death. He was even counted among thieves, yet He willingly went through all that. Of course, there was nothing he could physically gain from all his sacrifices, but an eternal reward awaited him. Jesus was highly exalted among men, given a name above every other name, and at the mention of his name, every knee should bow, both in heaven and on earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Likewise, your calling is not for self-gratification. There might be nothing you physically stand to gain from fulfilling it, it would involve a life of selfless sacrifice, wholly dedicated to glorifying Christ. When you find yourself joyfully enduring pain and hardship because you know you are doing what God has called you to do on earth, then you are truly walking to fulfill His calling for your life. You are simply living according to the assignment God has for you, ensuring your life consistently reflects His glory. Beloved, God's calling is upon the life of every child of God, and you cannot find true joy and fulfillment in life when you live outside of this calling. When you want to know the purpose of a thing, you ask the manufacturer. God is the creator of your life, and He did not send you here without an assignment. He has endowed you with gifts to help you fulfill your calling. He has provided you with all you need to fully live out the best life. You owe yourself the diligence of seeking clarity on what God wants you to do. The only way to gain this clarity is by asking Him. Instead of trying to achieve personal recognition and success on earth, surrender to God's sovereign authority and allow Him to make a sign and wonder out of your life. When you trust God in this way, you will receive clear instructions on what to do, and then you can confidently walk in fulfilling His calling over your life. You might be called to be a teacher of the Word, a writer, a singer, an inspirer, or a preacher. Whatever the call in your life, you need to ask yourself, 
Is this something I can accomplish solely with my strength and abilities? Or do I need to walk by faith to fully accomplish it? Will it only provide for my needs and leave a fleeting mark in history? Or will it glorify Jesus? You also need to examine your motives and goals. Why are you doing what you are doing? Your intentions matter greatly in fulfilling your calling. Your heart's posture is more critical than the actions you take. You can do the right thing with the wrong intentions, and that will still lead to undesirable outcomes. Remember Saul, when his motives shifted to personal gain, he lost sight of his calling. As you step forth into your calling, ensure you stay focused on glorifying Jesus rather than seeking personal gain or recognition. In the journey of faith, prayer stands as a vital and indispensable component that connects us intimately with our Heavenly Father. It's through prayer that we enter into a secret communion with God, opening ourselves up to incredible transformation and abundant blessings. However, despite its significance, prayer can often prove to be one of the most challenging disciplines for believers to consistently maintain. The demands of our daily lives, be it work, school, family responsibilities, or other time-consuming obligations, often encroach upon the time we allocate for prayer. These expectations placed upon us make it increasingly difficult to sustain a consistent prayer life. Even when we're aware of the immense benefits and achievements that await us when we engage in prayer, we still find ourselves falling short of the commitment we should possess. Yet within the struggle and difficulty of maintaining a consistent prayer life, it's crucial to acknowledge that prayer serves as our most expedient method of communicating with God. Without prayer, we risk losing touch of the very heart and essence of our Heavenly Father. It's through this divine communication that we gain insight into His will, align our desires with His purpose, and experience a deeper understanding of His character. Prayer holds the power to transform not only our circumstances, but also our hearts and minds. In those moments of intimate connection with God, we find solace, strength, and divine guidance. Prayer molds our character, it renews our spirits, and transforms us into God's likeness. In these end times, it's paramount for every believer to remain steadfast in the place of prayer. Despite the distractions that engulf us and the constraints of our tight schedules, we must persevere in prayer. For it is in those moments of wrestling and striving to pray that God works diligently behind the scenes, fighting our battles. For some, not until things go bad do they see a need for prayer. Whereas it is precisely during those blissful and prosperous moments we need prayer the most, not to be crushed by the enemy. By making a conscious effort to carve out moments for communion with God, we allow Him to take the lead and guide our steps. Although it may feel tasking to prioritize prayer amidst the endless battles and enemies that surround us, but you must know that only through prayer can you overcome them. God is actively engaged in your struggles. He sees the battles you're facing and He's willing to fight on your behalf. Even when you feel weak or inadequate, He's ready to strengthen you. But how will He do that if you don't invite Him into the affairs of your life? Jesus counseled His disciples to watch and pray as to not fall into temptation. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Beloved, through prayer, we can overcome temptations to sin. By simply praying for God's help to keep us from making the wrong choices, we can access the strength to do what's right. You don't have to fast and pray every day of the year to live a righteous life by simply cultivating a regular prayer life. You'll receive grace to live above sin. When we are fervent in prayer, even when it is difficult, we open wide doors to the abundant peace of God to permeate every aspect of our lives. As we humbly lay before Him our worries, fears, and heartfelt requests, we willingly release the weight of our burdens into His hands. It's through this deliberate act of surrender that the peace of God surpassing all human comprehension, establishes itself as our ever-present companion. With this divine peace as our steadfast guide, we are empowered to confront the myriad of challenges that life presents with unwavering confidence and serene composure. 
In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, we're instructed, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. These profound verses illuminate the transformative power of prayer in our lives. It is only through prayer that we can be relieved of our anxieties and approach every circumstance, big or small, with courage. When you engage in prayer, you'll easily find answers to the questions about life. Or do you think God can't speak or engage in conversations? Praying and listening to the answers from God can help you better understand your purpose in life. God will help you understand why you're here and what you can do to return to live with Him after this life. Prayer serves as far more than a mere method of communication with your Heavenly Father. It stands as a gateway through which you can access His abundant blessings. It also helps you gain a better understanding of God's loving nature. When you engage in persistent prayer, you're displaying our unwavering faith in God. It's a sign you trust His faithfulness and sovereign will. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What a glamorous moment of exchange with your Heavenly Father. Approach Him with confidence, knowing that as you ask, you will receive. As you seek, you'll find. And as you knock, the doors of His divine provision and favor will swing open. This divine invitation is extended to all who wholeheartedly approach God in prayer. Regardless of their present state or the magnitude of their requests, each sincere petitioner is assured of receiving divine response. Each earnest seeker is promised the discovery of divine treasures, and to each humble knocker, the door of divine opportunity will be swung open. Beloved, grab this invitation and the promises it entails and run with it. Embrace the transformative power of persistent prayer. It's the key that unlocks the storehouses of heaven's blessings. As you faithfully and diligently seek after your heavenly Father, you will be shocked at how great things will begin to unfold in your life. In His infinite mercy and love, He will provide for all your needs. With unwavering faith, go before the throne of grace. Doing so leads to immeasurable blessings and an ever-deepening relationship with God. Also, for your troubled soul, you will find solace in His presence, no matter how fierce the turbulence is. Beloved, when you build a consistent prayer life, you will genuinely experience God in various dimensions. His words and revelations will be so real and indisputable to you. Your convictions about God will be strengthened. You'll know and believe that God is not distant from you when things go wrong. You'll know Him as your Redeemer, your refuge, your healer, your protector, your strength, and even your just partner. Your self-esteem will no longer be based on the opinions of men. The praises of men and external validation will no longer make any sense to you because you've found your identity and totality in God through prayer. Beloved, the benefits are immeasurable, but one thing is certain. A life void of prayer is a life void of power. A life void of prayer is a life full of sin and is constantly falling apart. As you decide today to rekindle your prayer altar, commitment is the key. To be disciplined about praying daily, you must be committed to it. Motivation and determination will not sustain you. You must take it upon yourself as an engagement and obligation that cannot be disrupted. If not, distraction, excuses, and spiritual laziness will creep in. God is keen to hearing every word that comes out of your lips, including the whispers of your heart. He's not deaf. He doesn't sleep or slumber. He listens and hears all your utterances and groanings. He yearns for an intimate and profound relationship with you. He only wants you to speak. Even if you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit will fill your mouth with the right words. He understands your deepest desires, your burdensome concerns, and even your songs of praise. When you engage in prayer, you align every beat of your desires with His divine will. 
The assurance found in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 resonates deeply within our beings. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. These words, spoken with unwavering love and faithfulness, beckon you to approach the throne of grace. Your Heavenly Father is calling you to draw near to Him in prayer and to pour out your heart in His presence. And in response, He will listen and grant your heart's desire. Such is the profound nature of prayer. It's a divine exchange, a sacred communion between a loving Father and His beloved children. In the act of prayer, you experience the glory and beauty of God. And this image is being transferred to you as His child and your life no longer operates at the ordinary level because you're carrying His supernatural grace and glory. As you voice out your hopes, your dreams, your fears, and your praises in the place of prayer, you will find yourself immersed in the sweet fragrance of the Father. You'll no longer struggle to do things your own way. Maintaining calmness and tranquility in the face of afflictions will come easy because you found solace and assurance in the presence of your Father. As you commit to a consistent practice of prayer, you will unlock a wellspring of power and efficacy. Remember what the Bible says about the prayers of a righteous man. They avail much. They possess tremendous ability to usher forth transformative and extraordinary changes not only in their own lives, but also in the lives of others who are touched by their intercession. James chapter 5, verse 16b emphasizes this truth. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Committing to daily prayer is a decision that can transform anyone's life in so many ways. As you take out time each day to seek God's presence, you position yourself to experience His peace, receive His blessings, enjoy His attentive listening, and access the power of righteousness. Beloved, never allow the enemy to deprive you of all these benefits. Strive to fight the distractions and busyness of life to make prayer a priority, and you'll see the mighty hand of God working in your life. Get up and plan a time for daily prayers that you'll have to promise yourself to follow regardless of your schedules. You can write a list of prayer points on a sticky note or journal, and at the same set time every day, get rid of all distractions and call upon the name of God. Getting a playlist of great worship songs can also foster your prayers. However, you can always depend on the Holy Spirit for utterance. In the journey of faith, Witnessing tangible evidence of God's presence and hands working wonders is everyone's desire. Such manifestations strengthen our convictions and reinforce our faith. While His ways are mysterious and often beyond human comprehension, there are moments when His hand becomes unmistakably evident. These signs remind us of His love, faithfulness, and active involvement in our daily life. However, they may not be visible signs as you expect. So, let's explore some of these clear signs that indicate God's hand is working in your life, inspiring you to trust Him deeply and walk confidently in His divine plan. First, God can ordain divine appointments and unexpected connections in your life. Have you ever experienced unexpected encounters or connections that seem divinely orchestrated? These are divine appointments where God aligns circumstances and people to fulfill His purpose in your life. It could be meeting someone who offers guidance, encouragement, or even a life-changing opportunity. These encounters might leave you in awe, attesting that God's mighty hand is at work, orchestrating every detail. Sometimes, it is an encounter that settles your long-pending problems, as of the case of Abraham and Sarah when they encountered the three angels. You'll encounter individuals whose path intertwines seamlessly with yours, and most times you don't have to make efforts for these encounters to occur because God had ordained them. Such encounters is a reminder that He is actively involved in your life, guiding you toward His perfect plan. You can see a clear instance in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 40, where the Ethiopian eunuch's encounter with Philip changed his life for the better. You know that God's hand is at work in your life when your prayers are answered at the perfect time. Prayer is a powerful tool of communication with God, our Heavenly Father. 
When you earnestly seek God's guidance, provision, or intervention, you can witness His hand at work through answered prayers. Sometimes, the answers may not come as you expect or within your desired time frame. But, ever heard someone say God's timing is the best? Yes, He's never late. His faithfulness remains unwavering. Looking back, you can see how God's hand moved in your life, aligning circumstances, opening doors, and providing unexpected solutions. These answered prayers serve as a testament to God's love and His desire to actively participate in your life. Maybe you've not experienced moments of God's perfect timing, where events unfold in ways beyond human explanation. When divine intervention aligns circumstances, resources, and people at the exact moment needed, you'll witness God at work. It is in these moments that your faith is strengthened and you find solace in knowing that God's plans unfold at the right time. When Lazarus' sisters sent a message to Jesus saying their brother Lazarus was sick, Jesus didn't come immediately. John chapter 11, verse 17 through 19 says, On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. From this scripture, ordinarily, one would say Jesus Christ came late whereas he was just in time for a bigger form of miracle. Whatever situation seems long overdue, don't fret. Keep praying and trust God's time. Another sign of God's hand working in your life is the presence of peace and joy amidst the chaos. Life, generally, is not a bed of roses. At one point or another, you'll encounter storms that will threaten to engulf you. With chaos and uncertainty plaguing the world, finding peace and joy may seem like a vain pursuit. However, as a believer, you possess an unparalleled source of peace and joy that transcends the chaos of this world. That is why the Bible clearly says that when others say there's a casting down, you'll rejoice because your experience will be a lifting up. Being a child of God makes you stand out in times of struggle, not necessarily because you won't experience them, but because you have Christ in your boat. When you embrace the transformative power of peace and joy, you find solace for your soul and become a beacon of light in a darkened world. Joy cannot be obtained outside Christ. Yes, joy isn't happiness. In Psalms chapter 46, verse one through three, David said, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. This explains why people still live miserably despite the wealth they've accumulated because there is that peace and joy that only comes from knowing God. This is a clear sign of God's hand, offering comfort and assuring you of His presence. He is your refuge, granting strength and equipping you to overcome adversities. One of the most profound signs of God's hand working in your life is the transformation and growth you are bound to experience. As you surrender your life to God, He begins a transformative work within you. He molds your character, heals your infirmities, and empowers you to overcome challenges. Through His Spirit, you are continually being transformed into the image of Christ. This growth may not always be comfortable or easy, but it is evidence of God's hand at work, shaping you into a vessel of His love and an instrument of His grace. If you take time to reflect on your journey, You'll see how God has brought you from where you were to where you are now, reminding you that He is faithfully working in your life. The Bible records the story of the Apostle Paul as evidence of God's transformative power in the life of an individual. Acts chapter 9, verse 13 through 17 says, Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled 
with the Holy Spirit. God has crafted the human heart with unique passions and talents. Beloved, when your aspirations seamlessly align with opportunities and doors begin to open effortlessly, it is a clear sign that God's hand is intricately at work. Embrace these moments of alignment, for they are signs guiding you toward fulfilling your purpose and impacting the world in meaningful ways. Paul's name wasn't just changed from Saul to Paul, but his lifestyle changed as well, from being a persecutor of Christians to a carrier of the gospel. This transformation yielded positive growth. His zeal and enthusiasm for working efficiently brought about the rapid speed of the gospel and increase in the Church of Christ to date. When God is at work in your life, you will also experience divine provision. In life, there are seasons of abundance and scarcity. When you experience blessings in unforeseen ways, it is a testament to God's abundant grace. He blesses you in ways that not only meet your needs, but also allow you to be a blessing to others. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 6 says, For the Lord your God will bless you as He has promised, and you will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. You will rule over many nations, but none will rule over you. When God divinely provides for you, there's no room to figure out how he did it. The widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 7 through 16, received divine provision that ended poverty in her life. She couldn't explain how she moved from having nothing to living a life of abundance. Dearly beloved, there are no two ways about it. Divine provision only comes from God as an indication of His hand in your life. As a believer, you should navigate the ebbs and flows of life with the steadfast assurance that God is walking beside you. Recognizing His hand at work brings joy, encouragement, and deepened faith. So, you must remain attentive and open your heart to the divine imprints you encounter on this journey. However, you need to retain God's hand in your life to remain a partaker of these blessings. How can you do this? First, regularly communicate with God through prayer and meditation. This helps to establish a deeper connection with Him and allows you to seek His guidance and presence in your life. You will also open yourself to receive His truth and direction. As you immerse yourself in Scripture, you gain a deeper understanding of God's character and strengthen your relationship with Him. Cultivating a life of gratitude can also help you recognize God's blessing in your life. By intentionally focusing on the good things, your perspective will be positive and you'll acknowledge God's hand at work. Expressing gratitude not only strengthens your relationship with God, but also attracts more blessings from Him. In case you don't know, appreciation is an application for more. God's hand will keep working in your life when you likewise strive to live a life that is pleasing to God by following His commandments and living by faith. This includes practicing love, forgiveness, kindness towards others, and obedience to His teachings. By living a life of faith and obedience, you invite God's presence and blessings into your life and sustain them. Make conscious efforts to seek His will in all aspects of your life. Pray for His guidance and wisdom when making decisions and be open to His leadership. On the other hand, Faith is essential in your walk with God. That is why scripture says that before you can work with God, you must believe in His abilities. If you don't have faith, you can't please God. And the moment you don't believe, you won't attract His blessings, talk less of sustaining them. Retaining the mighty hand of God in your life requires faith, trust, and a willingness to surrender to His will amongst others. Remember that God's hand is always extended towards you, ready to guide, protect, and bless you abundantly. Therefore, from today, trust God's mighty hand over your life and know that His unwavering presence guides your every step. Remain open to His leading, seeking His will above yours and embracing the signs that reveal His hand at work. May these signs inspire you to walk confidently in His divine plan, knowing that He who began a good work in your life will complete it. God bless you. When the world is spinning around you and it feels like you have no control over your life, the last thing you want to do is be still and take a breath. Yet that's exactly what you need during these times. But you may ask, how can I take a breath in the midst of chaos? The answer, by trusting in God. 
no matter what you're going through, you can always pause your concern and take a breath because you know that God will take care of you. He has a plan for your life and whatever you're going through is part of His plan. As long as you continue to trust Him and follow His path, you have no reason to fear. In 1 Kings chapter 17, Elijah announces that Israel will experience a great drought. The Lord then instructs him to go to Kareth Ravine, where a flowing brook provides him with water and the ravens provide him with food. But as the drought consumes the water throughout the land, the brook also dries up. But God doesn't leave Elijah in the lurch. He gives him new instructions to go to Zarephath, where a widow was to provide for him. When Elijah arrives, he encounters the widow and asks her for some water in a jar and a piece of bread. But the widow replies, As surely as the Lord your God lives, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought your life was over? Maybe you've been in a frightening car accident or you've received a worrisome diagnosis from a doctor. Or maybe you felt like your life was over, not literally, but figuratively. We have all faced situations that make us question the things we know and hold dear. When we lose someone close to us, it can feel like we can't go on without them. This woman knows exactly what it feels like to be close to death. She and her son are at death's door. They will have one last meal before slowly starving to death. The poor woman must have been terrified. She had nothing left to look forward to except for suffering and death for not only herself, but also for her son. But Elijah says to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends the rain on the land. The woman returns home and does as Elijah instructed. She makes a loaf for Elijah and brings it to him, trusting that his words are true and that she will have enough to feed herself and her son yet. Sure enough, when she returns after feeding Elijah, there is enough flour and oil for her to make more bread. And as the days go on, Elijah's promise proves to be true. The jar of flour is never empty and the jug of oil is never dry. The woman continues to feed all three of them. She took a chance when she made that first loaf for Elijah. She heard his decree from the Lord and she put her trust in it. And for that, she was rewarded. She thought that her future contained imminent death, but the Lord had other plans for her. He wanted her to continue feeding Elijah so that Elijah could continue in his work. But the woman's trust in the Lord wavered when her son became ill. He grew worse and worse until he stopped breathing altogether. The widow turned to Elijah and accused him of being the reason for her son's death. But Elijah took the boy into his room and laid him on the bed. Then he pleaded with the Lord to bring him back to life. The Lord heard Elijah and the boy began to breathe again. He returned the boy to his mother and she responded, Now I know you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. Elijah must have been surprised when the child grew ill and died. When praying for the child, he asked the Lord why he would allow tragedy to befall the widow who had been taking such good care of him. He didn't understand God's plan, but he didn't despair right away as the widow did. He didn't become angry at the Lord and turn away from him. Instead, he turned towards the Lord and placed his trust in him. He knew that God had the power to raise the child from the dead and that he would hear his prayer. Elijah was rewarded for his trust and the boy was brought back to life. As a result, the widow's trust in the Lord was also restored. She recognized that Elijah truly was a man of God and that his words came from the Lord. We can be just like the widow sometimes. When God does something miraculous in our lives, we trust Him, but we don't always maintain that trust. When things are going well, we remain close to the Lord and thank Him for His goodness. But when things begin to go downhill, we often turn away from Him and allow our despair to overwhelm us. When you hear bad news, your first thought might be, why God? We often wonder why God allows bad things to happen. 
It's okay for us to wonder that, but we also have to accept that we don't always receive an answer. We can't always know why God does what He does. We can't know what His plans are or where they will lead, but we have to trust Him nonetheless. Even though the Lord demonstrated His power to the widow by supplying her with flour and oil day after day, as soon as death showed up on her son's doorstep, her trust disappeared like water during a drought. If it weren't for Elijah's faith and pleading, her son may have remained dead. But even though Elijah's life was turning upside down, he remained calm. He took a breath and turned to God. That is exactly what you and I need to do when we face hard times. When unexpected things happen in our lives, we don't know how to deal with them. We think that they've come from nowhere, but God controls every aspect of our lives. He always knows what we'll face. He doesn't want us to face suffering and hardship, but sometimes we need to. The good news is that God promises to be with us during the good times and the bad times. As long as we continue to put our faith and trust in Him, He will be right by our side. One of my favorite illustrations of trusting in the Lord comes from Luke chapter 8. It describes how Jesus set sail with His disciples on a calm lake. Jesus fell asleep below the deck, but in the meantime, a great storm came upon them. The wind battered the sails and the waves buffeted the ship. The disciples were afraid for their lives. They were sure that they would drown. But Jesus continued to sleep, unaware that anything was wrong. The disciples couldn't believe that Jesus was asleep at such a time, and they woke him up with their fears. They exclaimed that they were about to go down in a shipwreck, but Jesus didn't join in their panic. He calmly rose up and went to the top deck to observe the storm. He rebuked the wind and the waves, and immediately the lake was calm. The scene was so serene that you couldn't tell there had ever been a storm in the first place. Jesus then turned to his disciples and said, Where is your faith? My friends, when you are becoming overwhelmed by the storm of your life, ask yourself, Where is my faith? If your faith is not in God, then you have reason to fear the storm. But if your faith is in the Lord God Almighty, you have nothing to fear. Just as Jesus calmed the storm on the lake, He can calm the storm in your life. The storm that the disciples faced showed them how powerful Jesus really was and proved to them that Jesus was the Son of God. The storms that you face may be just as unexpected as the storm Jesus and the disciples faced, but like that storm, you can trust that you are facing it for a reason. When Esther entered the competition to become the next Queen of Persia, she never could have predicted that not only would she win and become the new queen, but her position would enable her to save the lives of her people. When Moses fled from the Pharaoh after killing an Egyptian, he had no idea that God would call him back to face Pharaoh and save the Israelites from slavery. The little shepherd boy named David never imagined that he would defeat a giant with nothing but a stone and a slingshot. He couldn't have foreseen that he would become a great soldier and the most legendary king of Israel. We like to know what our future holds, but the truth is we have no idea. Even if we think we know, our lives can change in an instant. But that doesn't mean that the future has to be scary. The unknown is not something to be feared, but something that we can look forward to because when you trust in the Lord, you'll be prepared to face whatever comes your way. You will face hard times and you'll wonder where your life is headed, but as long as you continue to follow the Lord, you'll know that you're on the right path. If God can provide an endless supply of flour and oil in the middle of a drought, He can provide you with all that you need. And if God can raise a little boy from the dead, then there is nothing He cannot do. God has almighty power over everything on this earth, including life and death. He knows what's going on everywhere at all times, not only in the present, but also in the future. He knows what your future holds, and He promises to be with you through it. Will you take a breath and trust in Him? Life is full of ups and downs, triumphs and tragedies, good times and bad. You never know what to expect each morning when you open your eyes. 
Your entire life could change in a single moment for better or worse. All it takes is a sudden gust of wind or a fateful phone call. You never know what might happen at any given moment. It can be scary to think about how messy and unpredictable life is, but you can chase away that fear with the knowledge that God is present every moment and He is good. Whatever you are going through right now, whether good or bad, God is with you in it. It's certainly easier to accept this when things are going well than when they aren't. When you celebrate a wedding or the birth of a healthy baby, it feels natural to turn to God and thank Him for His gifts. We can look back and see how he worked in the bride and groom's lives and caused them to meet and fall in love. We look at a newborn baby and feel God's presence and love in that precious new life. When you get a promotion at work, you thank God for giving you the opportunity. You look back and recognize that he gave you the strength to work hard and get to this point in your career. Anytime a joyful life event occurs, we turn to God and recognize his goodness. We barely have to look to see it. But what about the less significant events that happen daily? Do you notice God's goodness in those too? You might thank God after you have safely driven through a snowstorm, but what about when the roads are clear? While in both cases you safely arrive at your destination, you are much more likely to thank God when you've experienced the fear brought on by a dangerous storm. The disciples experienced this firsthand in Mark 4 when they were in a ship with Jesus and a wild thunderstorm rocked the boat. Jesus was sound asleep, but the disciples woke him up in a panic. They were afraid for their lives, but Jesus calmly got up and spoke to the wind and waves, causing them to immediately quiet down. He rebuked the disciples for being afraid and having little faith in him. The disciples probably thought their faith was strong when they set out on the boat, but as soon as it was tested by the storm, it was revealed to be weak. They underestimated God's goodness and thought that he would let them down even though Jesus was on the boat with them. They trusted God to keep them safe when the waters were calm, but doubted him when they became rough. Because of this, they were all the more grateful for safe passage when they made it through the storm safely. If they had sailed on without incident, they wouldn't have given a thought to their faith and God's power. However, because they saw Jesus save them, they recognized his power and appreciated it all the more. My friends, there is absolutely nothing wrong with thanking God when he helps you through a storm. In fact, he expects you to thank him, but we must not forget to thank him when the waves are calm as well. We can't get so used to God's goodness that we take it for granted. Instead, we must take every moment to recognize it. When you travel safely to and from work every day, you probably don't give it a second thought. However, if you did, you would realize that God's power kept you safe throughout. You may have been seconds away from a terrible crash that could have ended your life. You can look back and think that nothing happened, when in reality, God was working constantly to keep you safe and protected. This doesn't just apply to traveling. Every morning you wake up is a new gift from God. Anything could have happened to you during the night, but it didn't. That's a gift from God. Every food item that you consume is a gift from God. The very clothes on your body are gifts from God. Take a moment to look back on your day so far and notice all of the gifts that God has given you. Recognize his goodness in each moment and think about how he has kept you safe, fed, healthy, and warm. But what about the flip side of all this? You may be thinking that's all well and good, but what about when life isn't going so well? What if you survived the drive in the snowstorm but endured a terrible crash that paralyzed you? What if you used to be a world-class runner and now it seems like your life is ruined because you'll never walk again. Or what if it was your spouse in the crash and they didn't survive? These types of situations can certainly leave us questioning God's love and goodness. A lot of people struggle with their faith after dealing with a loss, but when times are tough, it's more important than ever to draw near to God rather than run away from Him. It's important to remember that God is in control of all things, and He will make everything turn out for our good no matter how bad it may be. Joni Erickson Tata was just 17 years old when she dove into Chesapeake Bay and altered the course of her life forever. What began as an ordinary day ended in tragedy when she struck the bottom of the bay and became paralyzed from the shoulders down. She experienced years of anger and depression, no doubt wondering why God would let this happen to her. 
but over time she began to accept her disability and recognize it as part of God's plan for her life. Now she's a well-known evangelist who uses her experience to bring others to Christ. Another example is Nick Vujicic, who was born without arms and legs. He spent his childhood questioning why he was like this and eventually tried to commit suicide. But like Joni, he made his way back to God and used his experience to share the gospel. There are countless other examples of ordinary people who have dealt with extreme tragedy and used it to not only strengthen their own faith, but that of others as well. If you are going through something similar, take a closer look at some of these examples and take some time to read the book of Job. Despite losing everything he had, including his children, his livestock, and his health, Job continued to cling to God. He questioned God, but he did not run away from him. It's okay to wonder why God allows certain things to happen to us or to our loved ones. However, the Word of God provides us all the answers we need. No matter how hard things get, you simply have to trust that God knows what He is doing. You have to trust that He is good, and if you ever doubt His goodness, reacquaint yourself with Jesus' life on earth and death on the cross. Jesus knows what it's like to deal with tragedy. He knows what it's like to be mocked and scorned, to be called a liar, and to be hated by the very people He came to save. He experienced the most excruciating death but the real kicker is that he didn't deserve any of it. You and I deserve death and hell because before Christ, we were sinners. We were imperfect sinners who were worthy of death. However, Jesus was perfect. He never sinned, and yet he suffered more tragedy and hardship than any of us will ever experience in our lifetime. You might think, how can a God who sends his son to I have a two-part answer to that. Firstly, Jesus died willingly because it was God's will. Secondly, Jesus is God, which means that God loves us, and it was his will to die for our salvation. As 1 John 5, 1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. If we love Jesus, we love God. But where does love come from? Well, it comes from God, of course. 1 John 4, 7 through 8 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. If you question God's love and goodness, simply look at these verses. God is love, which means that no one can love as much as God does. Now, because God loves you, he wants the best for you. Sometimes in life, bad things happen, as well as good things. Joni and Nick might never have experienced the power of God's love to the degree that they did if they hadn't gone through what they did. No matter how often bad things happen, God is always good at the end of the day, and we can trust because he knows the future. We can't see the future, but only what is right in front of us. We can only take one step forward at a time, and often with uncertainty. Nonetheless, we don't have to be afraid of the future because God is our light. He can see the entire roadmap of our lives, and He will lead us where we need to go. Sometimes our path will have us trudging through tragedy. Sometimes it will be extremely hard to take another step and keep following God. But if you want to keep the light with you, you have to keep walking beside Him. You may get stuck sometimes. You may wander off the path and lose the light for a time, but you can always find it again because it will always be waiting for you. No matter how far you stray from God, he will always accept you back into his arms if you are willing to go back to him. He is the great shepherd, and if he sees one lamb wandering off, he will leave the others to go and find it so that all of the sheep can be safely together again under his love and protection. Life is complicated. Life is hard. Life could be great today and terrible tomorrow, but no matter what life throws at you, you never have to face it alone. You can trust that despite everything you are going through, God is always with you. Keep holding his hand and keep walking in his light. Do not take his light for granted. Thank God for every gift he has given you, whether big or small, because every gift is an expression of his love and goodness.